Well, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Joe Shale Directories and the uh, um, Kent Chamber of Commerce for allowing me to be here today and to, to speak on behalf of uh, Arco Equipment. Um, change the slide, please. Um, my name is Tony Barbera. I'm um, with Barbco Incorporated. Um, we're a family-owned company. My, my father, Jim Barbera up there, he's the founder. He founded the company back in 1989. Um, we're a manufacturer of horizontal auger boring equipment, tunneling equipment, and directional drills, and all the toolings and everything for to accessories for those that line of equipment. My father... Uh, started his career a long time ago, and he started in the trenches, out in the field, doing sales and service, service, uh, technical service, field service for his brother, Leo Barbera, who owned a company called American Auger. Now, American Auger is our currently today our biggest competition. Um, my father, Jim, Jim Barbera, has since passed, and Uncle Leo is out of the business. But as as generations go on. Um, We've, we're still kind of neck and neck with American Auger as manufacturers for what we do. Um, it's, uh, I, I think with the way my father started this company and his approach to the market, okay, through field technical service, um, being out there uh, with the end user in the grind, in the pit on a daily basis, trying to solve problems that, that they would encounter during the, during their during their crossings and their jobs, um, that kind of propelled us into a to it snowballed into kind of giving us a a uh, recognition um, or a reputation, if you will, for being a service provider to the industry um, and in in education as far as how to um, use our equipment or apply these types of equipment in the ground um, or to how to solve a problem that these guys come up with on the fly as we work with them. So that's kind of why I'm here today, because, uh, you know, we want to spread that out and, and we look at you professionals and, and see how that maybe we could give you a, a sampling of what we could do, what, what we offer, and maybe this would be solutions for possible problems you encounter while you guys go through your work and try to mitigate risks and whatnot. As, as you look at these crossings. With that said, we have two um, products that I'd like to talk to you about today, okay, that that impact the environment one way or another. Okay, the first one is the Flexbore, the Flexbore tool. This Flexbore, Flexbore is a is an environmentally safe trenchless method and tooling package. It's not a machine, it's more of a, um, it basically takes the, the same Characteristics of horizontal directional drilling removes the drilling fluid and uses air as a substitute and therefore creates an anti frack out system. One of the biggest problems we've encountered over the last several years of all these pipelines, and y'all know, I'm sorry about that, y'all know, um, has been the spills that we've had, the, the gallons and the countless gallons of. of uh, of bentonite and drilling fluids that have spilled into our wetlands, rivers, and streams. Um, it's just caused a tremendous amount of problems all the way around. And people trying to try to, to work around getting uh, having that problem the, the, from cleanup to, to, to remediation and, and uh, just the impact it causes on the environment, those spills. So the problem here that the flex bore can, can solve is it can be a uh, it can be a solution to these anti to these frack out problems that we're having when when traditional HDD crossings are being applied in the ground. I'm going to take you through a little bit of how this works, okay? Because it's very simple, okay? And, and this is basically a cutting head here, all right? As it's going through the ground, it could be an HDD cutting head, and it's drilling through the ground from the from the right side of the screen to the left, okay? The difference that we have here, and the reason why this works, is because directional drilling pumps pumps a fluid into the ground. Water, it's a water base, it could be bentonite, it could be a polymer, it could be a, whatever the ground calls for, right, to 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 
they pump it into the ground and they, as the tool cuts the ground, it, it creates a slurry and it creates a flowable slurry and they keep pumping more in and it, and it eventually flows out the way that you, the way that the, the hole's being created. Hopefully. Okay. But little fissures in the ground above the borehole and um, uh, fractures in the ground can, can release those fluids from that borehole to the surface and then, you know, contaminate whatever is up there, streams, wetlines, whatever it is. And uh, so this tool, instead of the fluid going around it and, and, and flowing out the back, basically the, the tool itself gobbles up the ground, okay? And then once it's inside the center of the tool, um, air is injected through the pilot that we're running, and it blows those cuttings out the back through the drive casing that's rotating cutting it, as opposed to in the in the open borehole therefore casing the cuttings and and uh you know reducing the risk for inadvertent returns this is a, a picture of a front of a cutting head here and uh, so you can see the strategic mm -hmm. jets that you see there you can see the the air when we mix a little bit of water in it we can do this drive we can do this with a little bit of water um but as the as the ground gets as that tool is forcing itself through the ground, um, ground's trying to pack in there. Those jetters are blowing it into the into the center of that barrel to where the, a big main jet is in there and and, and drives it off the back. This next slide it really kind of paints a better picture here. So you have a maxi rig out back behind there running a big large diameter pipe to turn this tool. And here, previously, they put a 900,000 foot pipe in the ground, pilot in the ground to the exit side. So they got an air compressor set up on the exit side, pumping air through that pilot back to the face of the tool that you see in the ground. And then as it goes through the ground, the cuttings go through that pipe and come out the back of the machine, which the next slide will show you. But if you were doing, um, if you were doing an HED crossing, right there in that pit would be, that would just be full of fluid and those would be your returns coming out, hopefully. If you lose those returns, then they're going somewhere. They're going somewhere in the ground and not likely to be a good scenario. So here, the, the, all the cuttings are cased in the drive casing. The cuttings then follow that drive casing all the way back to the machine to where there's a, a diverter on the front, that, that green piece on the top of that Kelly up there where that drill head is. Um, all the cuttings are kind of basically diverted out of that, uh, out of the, the drive casing into the hose, and they could be stockpiled in a containment box. Okay, they don't have to even put into a into a um, in, into a a pit and then have that that water go to a reclaimer and shaked out. It goes right into a box, and then you can they can get rid of it if it's hazardous waste or whatever. They can quickly get rid of it, put a new box in there, and deal with that another way. So I'm going to, after this slide, we're going to show you a quick video of the, of the, of the flex tool and how it all comes together and you'll get a better idea of this. But, but this quick segment I'm giving you on flex tool, what it's all about is stopping the spills. So I'm going to say even a previously bored hole that had frack outs, if a flex tool came through there on a casing phase, where there was a big, large pool of mud or whatever it is, fracked out in the ground. As that tool would come back through that pilot hole, it would literally suck up everything in there and, and divert it out through that cased process. So here's a video, and then I want to talk to you about one other product. Howdy.
additional correctional fluid methods as countless gallons enter our wetlands, waterways, and backyards, resulting in major cleanups, fines, and shutdowns. The use of the flex bore method is a proven resolution to inadvertent returns that are associated with horizontal directional drilling because the flex bore system utilizes casing to carry the cuttings and provides the least path of resistance. Inadvertent return concerns are eliminated. Here we have a horizontal directional drill performing a radius crossing under a waterway. The pilot's established and the flex bore push reaming process has been chosen. The air compressor and water pump, if needed, is set up on the exit side of the crossing. The output hose is connected to a pulling swivel. A diverter is attached to the drill spindle. The flex tool is attached to the pilot string and threaded drive casings are connected. The air compressor and water pump are turned on. The excavator operator on the exit side keeps a small amount of tension on the pilot string during the ream process, keeping the nose of the tool pulled up into the pilot hole. The drill operator starts rotation and the push reaming begins. Cuttings are carried through the threaded drive casing back to the diverter, where they're ejected. Consecutive drive casing are added until the crossing is complete. For more information on the Flexbore system or other products, call Barco at 800-448-8934. Okay, so that, like I said, it's very simple. The way it works, it's, it's figure we should have been doing this a long time ago. It's, it's very simple. There's nothing to it. Uh, we're simply taking the air and replacing it, replacing the, uh, the drilling fluid with the air and using that. And in this case, uh, the horsepower is the, the the air in this equation. Okay, you need you need CFM. All right, so it's no it's no different than directional drilling. If you're going to drill a hole and prop your your production time is going to be on how mu how quickly you can excavate that ground. So how much drilling fluid do you pump into the ground to create a slurry and to excavate the hole? That sets the pace of production. Here, CFM would do the same thing for you. Um, that's a little tidbit on flex tooling. And now I would like to speak to you about our tribor machine. Now, tribor machine is a three in one machine. Okay. It's an auger boring machine, a directional drill, and a, a guided auger boring machine. Um, this is, is uh, what we believe to be a great approach to slip crossings, to potential slip drills. Um, give you a little background on the on the machine itself is a, it's a compact footprint okay so um, there's three models there's a, a 30 inch a 36 and a 48 inch model and they progressively you know spec wise get get larger and larger um, and they are the, this this machine is is for the most part designed to put the line of grade installs of you know, whatever it is, sewer line, uh, gas lines, whatever, it doesn't matter, but it is particularly accurate with some of the uh, some of the tooling that goes on here that, that's able to go on the unit. The unit is, is remotely controlled, okay? And uh, so every function of this machine is operated by the remote, so you don't need to be on the machine, okay? Safest ba place to be when you're drilling is away from the machine. So we're promoting that. Um, and it allows the operator to, that remote allows the operator to go walk around the machine and look at what's going on, maybe in, in some kind of focus area where you know, there's breakouts on these things that break the pipe. That's a high maintenance area. It allows you to go up there while you're operating and inspect and keep your eye out all the way around the, the, the equipment if need be to make sure everything's going well. Um, go ahead. Like I said, uh, three, three modes of operation. Auger boring is number one. And this is a footprint set up as an auger boring machine. Okay. Now, 
Everything's there. You're, you're pushing casing while you're excavating the hole in this method. Okay. So these are, this is your, this is your road crossing. You know, this is the old standby right here, the auger board machine doing road crossings. Okay. That's the setup it's in right there. Horizontal directional drilling looks the same pretty much, right? It has a set of breakouts in the front with a crane in the front attached to it. The track is expandable. So if you're going to run, if the contractor chooses to get more production, instead of running 20 foot joints, he can, he could get 30 foot random pipe and, and increase his production rate by using longer pipe, therefore less connections. That's what the machine can do. Um, and then finally phase of this machine is a guided auger boring phase. Okay. This is very similar to horizontal directional drilling with the exception that it, instead of injecting fluid into the ground to, to, and excavating the hole while the pilot's being put in, it's simply diverting. It's, 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 uh, it's compressing the soil. So it's, uh, it's compacting the soil as it goes through the ground and as it navigates. And you're steering this tool with a line of sight with guided auger point. So there's a, there's a high, Power camera in the back, looking through the machine, looking through the, the pilot tube you're putting in there. And so you can imagine if, you, if you're putting a 600 foot pilot in the ground, 400, whatever it is, and you can see lights, you can see through it. Well, then it's, it's straighter than anything out there. I mean, that's, that's, that's the best you can hope for, for what we're doing. Okay. And, and what, what I mean by what we're doing, this is the trenchless industry. That's, that's what we're, what the equipment we're building is for trenchless. And, uh, so I believe, go ahead, change the slide, please. I've already done this once, okay, more than once, but right here is a, 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 a setup for what a potential slip crossing might look like with the tri-board. Um, this is uh, shown, the, the machine set up in there. It's a 36-inch tri-board set up in there, and I think that's up to 60% right there. Um, I feel comfortable up to 60% grade, up or down, drilling with this machine. Um, I've been currently, uh, not too long ago, we just done a 47.4% 47, 47 uphill bore. Same footprint, same thing as you're looking at here. So from a, a slip mitigation, you know, trying to re reduce the risk here when you're drilling slips, um, you know, the, the tri bore machine can, can go on those angles and do these bores. Now, how you set this pit up is extremely important, right? So you have to have sheet piling in the front that goes up above to make sure that, it, and it's got to be rated to handle the weight of the ground if it should come down. And you have to have a concrete pad on, on, on the, that sets the elevation of your center line of your machine. And it has to, it has to be a substantial concrete pad and backstop. For whatever the, the the ground may throw at you, because you, you don't know what you're necessarily drilling in, in these parts of the country, it ain't all the same. And you know you're going to hit rock somewhere. You better be able to hold that machine. Okay. Next one. So the big thing about it when it comes to drilling slips with the tribor machine, number one, this can be done because it doesn't have an engine on board. Okay. It's an umbilical machine. It's a hydraulic or a hydrostatic unit. Um, so there's a power pack that sits out off to the side. So since the engine's not in there, that's what greatly affects the angle that you can drill it because engines can't feed, you know, the oil in the, the oil won't feed the engine properly at some angle. I think it's like maybe 18%. After 18%, an auger board machine is not, not going to be an option. So, but because it has the three modes of operation, it is extremely versatile in the hole. As I said, you get out there 100 feet and you're trying to put this crossing in and your ground condition changes, this machine will be able to be converted to an auger bore machine. It can flip to a directional drill on the fly right there in the pit. And, and it, that, that opens its tooling selection up to anything on the market. So, you know, if you're drilling a slip, you might not want to pump a bunch of fluid, you know, up that hill. And create a, a worse problem. You might go to a, a guided boring, um, you know, pilot so that you're you're not pumping fluid in there. So the point is, 
The machine is capable of drilling. We've already done two. I did one at 24% downhill, one at 47% plus uphill. Um, the tri is a, a great um, solution for slip crossings. The biggest thing that we have to keep in mind, everybody, is safety. And safety in a pit when you're working when you're working in that environment on a slope like that, in a pit like that, uh, you know, and, and you're used to doing this all the time flat, it, it changes everything. Every, everything may appear to be the same the way it's set up, but the fact that you're on the slope and you got to work up and down that slope to get from the, the chuck end of the machine to where, you know, to the front end of the pipe, up and down that slope, it's it's challenging. It, 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 it works on your body, so you have to be prepared. You have to... Be, you have to have the site ready with hand railing and, and everything in there has to be considered from a safety point of view. Um, but like I said earlier in this in this speech here, the number one asset to that safety there is being out of the pit. You know, that remote will come out of the pit and while we're drilling, while we're running it, and while it's under any harsh conditions and while it's in a, a operation mode, you can be out of there and everybody out of the pit and run the machine. So, um, I hope y'all look at look at this equipment, and uh, if you have any other questions, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. And then, um, before I leave you, I want to bring you attention to um, the uh, Louisiana Tech Auburn Boarding School. Okay, this is a a barb is affiliated with that. Um, uh, the my father, you have seen on the screen there, was uh, he's been given an honor. They put they they. Uh, but they, they, they built the facility in his name, him and his brother Leo Barbera's name. Uh, so it's a, uh, what's it called? It's called Barbera Education Research and Training Facility. And it, uh, there's curriculum through Louisiana Tech um, for Auger Boy. So when, when, when the, you gentlemen were talking about your training school, man, I think that's great. And I think that's where, uh, that's where this industry, you know, we have to continue doing that. Um, I think what you guys are doing is is upper high class um, stuff there, and uh, so if anybody needs any additional information about the Louisiana Tech curriculum and, and what they're doing down there, Flexbore or Tribor, I'm here to answer any questions for you. Thank you. Any questions for Tony? Flexible process, so it's it's like a two pass process. So what's the method of getting that your initial um, what do you call it, pilot bore in place? Well, any method currently on the market today, which is is a big problem, okay? Because if you're going to get a frack out, a large emphasis on the pilot is where you're going to get a frack out. However, if you get a frack out, then then it's not likely to improve during the reaming reaming phase. It's going to get worse. So to answer your question directly, you know, the the methods in piloting through a HDD or a guided auger boring machine, um, whether it be a mud motor, air hammer, um, a uh, a non fluid displacement system, those are those are the ways you get your pilot. Okay. So it's conventional, but yep. The second, the second process is the difference. Second process is where we're going to be able to protect the environment uh, from the frack out position there um so this this market th there is there is people manufacturers right now working on methods to get pilots in at a low annular pressure okay so that to reduce the risk of frack outs uh things like air motors as opposed to mud motors right um or a combination between air hammers and mud motors now it's a hammer that that rotates and it's firing and so those things are in development now and, and a lot of different companies coming at it from a different angle. So I hope that, and, and, I'm, and I'm sure as we go forward here, there'll be a lot better solutions for the pilots than we have today. Any other questions? All right, well, okay, thank you guys. Thank you, Tony.